Hey golfers, Michael Geiger here with Second Swing. I'm joined by Larry Bobka, Master Club Fitter. Larry, today we are answering, or at least trying to answer, one of, I think, the most commonly asked questions by every beginner golfer and really just most golfers, and that is, Larry, why am I missing right? Right-handed players right -handed missing players, right. Right-handed players, exactly. Left-handed players missing left. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that can contribute to that. There's, there's, there's swing things that can contribute to that. There's aiming things that contribute to that. There's golf club things that can contribute to that. I mean, most players, I mean, if you look at a PGA Tour player and you watch them on TV and they're in, they're in great shape and they turn and, and yep. they do a wonderful job of, of what I call opening and then closing the door and then getting past. Um, you know, I work with the players at the University of Minnesota on the men's golf team, and it's terrible to watch them because they're young and they're strong and they're fast and they hit it great. Remind you of a young you, I'm uh, sure. No, well, I wish. But they, you know, they have that ability. But every golfer has that ability to some extent to, to make the proper golf swing you might not be able to do it exactly the way they do it. You know, there's a lot of instruction talking about kind of, you know, holding on to the face mm -hmm. of the club and then releasing with your body and ground forces. I think that's all well and good. I think it, it, it works to a certain extent in every golfer. But, you know, you compared to me, I mean, uh, I'm old, you're young, I'm fat, you're in shape, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to be able to deliver, plus I've had both my hips replaced. You still have your I'm, hips. I'm two for two, yeah. You're two for two. You're going to have to make some adjustments, and you're going to have to make some changes. Well, you're going to have to do that in your golf swing, and you also have to do that in your equipment, too. Um, I found as I, as I had my hips replaced, speed went down a little bit. I went to softer golf shafts, easier to square the face, mm -hmm. you know. So... There's a lot of things to do. I, I think one of the things that, that people don't understand is, is, why, is it, why does it happen? Right, exactly. You know, uh, why, does, why does somebody call you up or I get a text message from a buddy going, oh, you know, I keep missing everything right. Well, it, it's a tendency, the players, to deliver the club outside their backswing, okay? Meaning, so if I, if I took this club back this way, it returns that way. That kind of over the top move. That, that, that yeah, over yeah. the top move, the right shoulder kind of throw is a right handed player. The right handed, the right shoulder throws over and it does this. Well, we're all good enough athletes to know that if I throw this over and it comes in like that, well, wow, if I leave the face that way, I'm going to hit that pull. Right. You know, the one that the dreaded double cross. Yeah. So what happens is the players come over, they un and then they open the face. And it becomes a glancing blow. Right. So the ball ends up spinning off this way, and it turns into, you know, a fade, slice, block into the trees. Hey, we're, we're, we're searching for golf balls on right. the right-hand side of the fairway. Yep. So, uh, you know... What we can do as club fitters is we can take a look at that. One of the great things about working with TrackMan is we have information. We show them their path. Mm -hmm. We show them their club face. We show them their attack angles. So while we're not necessarily giving somebody a lesson, a lesson we're giving them guidance. Right. You know, hey, this is, this is what you need to do. I, I can't tell you the times that people have come in and said, hey, I'm doing this, but I took a lesson from a pro and he wants me to do this, and they hit both swings, and the lesson they usually got from the pro is a better path on their swing, and it kind of confirms that's what they need to do. Right, and I think that's a big deal because obviously, as you outlined, there's a lot of technique things that golfers can do. I think we bo would both agree that getting lessons is a great idea, but in terms of a, from a fitter's perspective, is there a common uh, problem you've seen in equipment or a common fix that you've used, whether it's maybe making an iron a bit flatter or to really kind of help mitigate that right miss for golfers? Well, uh, what you would do is actually go the opposite. You would actually go upright. 
So getting the ball to start a little bit more left, making it a little bit easier for that ball to start left. If the club's more upright, they're going to have it more closed at impact. You know, uh, manufacturers like this ping driver has weight where I can put it in the draw bias to make this face rotate more. I've got a setting here where I can close the face. I can make sure the shaft flex, they're not fighting the shaft flex. Most of the time, people that tend to slice the ball play in a shaft that's too stiff, okay. you know? Something that's gonna release a little bit easier. So from a fitting standpoint, yes, there's, there's a lot of things we can do to help somebody hit a better golf shot, get a better start line, and maybe turn that big slice at least into a little fade, mm -hmm. and then down the road, allow that player to you know go take some lessons and, and work on the path of their golf swing. Definitely. Larry, thank you for the fascinating insight. I think, as Lee Trevino said, you can talk to a slice, but a hook won't listen. Sometimes that high right miss won't kill you, but if you want to work on maybe fixing that slice, we recommend that you come into second swing, talk to one of our master club fitters, and they'll help get you going straight down the fairway. Larry, thanks again. You're welcome. Thanks for watching.